Hello, YouTube fans. This is a Dust Dog Clone. Um, I guess I'm back. Um, still taking a break a little bit, but I want to talk about this real quick. Um, The Rock vs. Roman Reigns. I've talked about this before uh, in other YouTube videos in the past. You guys know that I don't care for it. I don't. I'm saying this right now. I don't care for it. If you care for it, that's fine. More power to you. I don't give a shit. Should have happened a long time ago? Yes, it should have happened a long time ago. Should they made Roman Reigns what he is right now a long time ago? Yes, but at the same time, all he does is cheat. And I'm not the only one that sees that. And, and and then when you look at his title reign, yeah, there might be a few good matches, but overall, I'm just like, you're not there. You're not there all the time. Or yeah, the reason he's not there is because of this. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's a detriment. I was I always thought that was a detriment to begin with. You're going to give a guy a title that can get sick at any moment, point in time, or die? What? 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 Why would you even try? That's a huge gamble. That is a huge fucking gamble. To, in WWE's eyes, it's paying off. To some people's eyes, it's paying off. For me, I'm, I just don't care. I just don't care about Roman Reigns anymore, man. I used to care. I used to, but then now I just don't give a fuck anymore, man. Him fighting The Rock, I just don't give a fuck anymore, man. I just don't. Again, if you do, that's fine, but I don't. I don't. I just don't. All right? The Rock, when he went to Raw, all he had to do was do The Rock Bottom, just like, um, what is it, um, shout out to the Myers Fanatic, because he said the same shit. All he had to do was do The Rock Bottom on this motherfucker, kick him out out of the rain, Grab the mic and say that you say you're head of the table, Roman Reigns. I say that I'm head of the table, bitch. That's all. That's it. That's it. And drop the mic and walk away. That's it. That is what I remember from The Rock. If anything, if anything that reminds you of what CM Punk used to be and or The Rock used to be, this is why you look at WWE and it is. It's just stupid shit that you regurgitate. And put it in the machine, and then gets pushed out in the machine, and it's literally, it's it's the same thing that you see with the MC, MCU, but I think it's worse. I know some people complain with the MCU and say it's bad, but I think this is worse. Way worse. That's why, that's why sometimes I point out saying that, yes, take bits and pieces that you like from WWE, and then move on. But when something we get like this happens, I'm just like, okay, we can wait, see what happens when the story develops and everything like that. But at the same time, start, starting with the storyline is everything, okay? Starting the storyline to get people invested is everything. And the fact that you guys don't have me invested with The Rock or Roman Reigns, I just don't give a fuck. Why, why should I care? Oh, it's the main event for WrestleMania or some of these pay-per-views. Okay, go ahead and tell me so I don't have to watch that match. <laughs> if, it's, if it's the last match... At WrestleMania 40, guess what? I'm not watching that match. Bye. WrestleMania 40 is over for me. Good night. It's the same thing with Triple H versus Roman Reigns. I did not watch that match. But that promo that Stephen McMahon made, yo, turn me the fuck on. I was, I was, mm, still to this day, that is the most sexiest, hottest promo I have ever heard from a female in wrestling. Oh my god. Put that. Put that. Put her. Put that shit. That she did. That promo right there. That when Triple H and Roman Reigns fought for that title. That promo that Stephen McMahon did. Grab that shit and frame it. Because it's so memorable. So fucking hot. So fucking sexy. And it still holds up to this day. The match though. Fell asleep. Didn't care. I was literally like. Oh, well, Roman Reigns spirit stuff in the Roman Reigns is the title. Off. I did not give a fuck. I just did not give a fuck. And then you have remember that time when Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble, which he wasn't ready at all whatsoever. 
I think they wanted to make Batista into a heel, which made no sense because we all know what 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 was what was it was Dan Bryan's time. Even Punk knew that. There was a time for Punk, and then that didn't do. Then they didn't do it. Then they then they tried to do it to Daniel Bryan, and if it wasn't for Punk, for all the shit that Punk went through, all that Daniel Bryan shit that we went through, wouldn't happen. If CM Punk got what he wanted back in the day before he came back, we wouldn't have got the whole Daniel Bryan shit. And it makes you think too. Was it meant to be? Because WWE is not is not this smart to have a long term storyline like this. We always talk about the Montreal school job being a walk because WWE is not this smart to think of this shit. Okay? Okay? We all know how WWE is. They are not smart enough to think about long term shit. I think we know this. I think we know this now as wrestling fans. Yeah, most people might be like, well, they have done long term storylines with this and that. And I'm all like, eh. Eh. The only time that is good is when it's like a Austin, a Rock, Taco, Kane, or Cena, or Triple H, Cena, and Orton, or Batista and Cena, or Batista and Triple H. You know, stuff like that. Other than that, eh, eh, eh. none of these superstars that you see in WWE. Are not really as memorable. And look, I I like Judgment Day. I know some people hate Judgment Day. I like Ray Ripley, but you don't see me buying a Ripley Ray Ripley poster, even though I would love to. But for some reason, I like what I see from her, but nothing screaming out for me to grab a, a figure of her or a poster of her. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. There was at one point I wanted a t-shirt from her. And I don't hate Ray Ripley or anything like that. Like I like I said, like, like I said again, I love the Judgment Day. In my opinion. I love Dominic and all that. I know some people might feel indifferent about it, but those are the little things that I like that are keeping me with wrestling, to be quite honest with you. They're all fun to the point that you feel like a little kid again. And not so much that's like Oh man, that doesn't make sense and shit like that. Like I get it, it doesn't make sense. But wrestling overall sometimes does not make sense. But uh, not at the same. But at the same time, it still needs to make sense. Again, for you to be engaged to the story and these people fighting. You know, it, the reason I say that it doesn't have to be all that serious is because look at the Undertaker stuff. All of that is all of that is like supernatural stuff, but we still get engaged with that stuff because the story is so good and the and Undertaker who he's working with, they do they, they have good chemistry. That's that's all I'm talking about. You need good chemistry. I don't give a fuck if you have a fucking sucky ass fucking storyline, but in the beginning it makes sense, but later on it, it, it it's like what the fuck's going on here? But as long as the as long as the characters and the people that are making the story are having fun with it and and can make it um make it a uh, relatable and make it reality almost like when you see a bad movie you know it's bad but these characters are doing so good that you'd be like you know what i can't hate this movie mainly because they're doing it so well to the point that you can't hate them it's almost like if you look at a tim curry or or a, a or a gary oldman or something like that these type of actors we need we need people like that in wrestling again man we do because we, if we don't have people like that in wrestling, then guess what? They're not stars. Look at Gary, Gary Oldman. Look at um, um, Tim Curry. People that act that way have become stars to the point that they will never be forgotten. Another one, um, um, Michael Keaton. Another one, Mark Hamill. These are the people that literally have like a thousand voices or a thousand things to of or a thousand things that they have done, like Jim Carrey and other people. That they would be remembered to the point that that we will want that they be remembered to the point that we'd be like, holy shit, they did awesome crap. Even even though some of the stuff that they did were not that really great, but they grabbed it, they grabbed chicken shit and made it to chicken salad. Okay, I cannot, guys, 
you there's an interview out there where John Cena said that he has you know how many times he had to take chicken shit and make it into chicken salad? John Cena has pointed that out before. And John Cena can do it. I know The Rock can do it too. But the reason I don't like this version of The Rock, I haven't been a fan of the version of this Rock for years. Maybe since when he came back to face John Cena. Yeah, I was excited. I was young and everything like that. But when you look back at that, I'm all like, that's not The Rock. That's not The Rock. That's not The Rock. I'm sorry, that's not The Rock. The Rock is what you saw when he fought Stone Cold Steve Austin around WrestleMania 19. When he when, when he was back and everything like that from Hollywood and The Hollywood Rock. Remember that one? That is The Rock. I don't know why they decided to drop that shit because, oh, you know, no one can't hate The Rock. Of course. But you still need to keep that demeanor. That's the reason why we loved him to begin with. Even back in the day when, when The Rock was a heel fighting Austin, he did all these skits and everyone kept laughing and laughing when he was, remember the, remember the some of the stuff that he did with Hurricane? That shit was hilarious. To the point that people were like, you, to the point that people were like, okay, now we know why we fell in love with you because you were so fucking funny and you spoke to the point that what people were thinking. Now it's to the point that these people just look at scripts and be like, okay, I'm doing it. And I'm just like, come on, guys. Come on. And I get it. Some people like just Alex love what Ahamar Hassan was point. Look, at first, I was kind of happy that he was a part of that. But at the same time, The Rock, he should not spend time with The Rock more than two two minutes. Not even two minutes, a minute. Because Ahamar Hassan should not get a few punches on The Rock at all, in my opinion. Why should he? Why should he? I believe more Seamus him getting hit by it than uh, uh, than this motherfucker. I believe more of Dolph Ziggler or The Miz or even anybody that is not Ahmed Hassan. What the fuck? I got nothing against him. But really? You could have put Drew McIntyre in there and I would have been fine with it. But you used him? Why? No one doesn't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Oh, he looks good in the game, and The Rock gave him this and that. I'm like, I don't care. If this is the point that we need to, if, if this is what we're doing with this old class of wrestlers to literally make them a show what they used to be, to 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 literally promote new wrestlers to become high, it's not working, man. It's not working. Look at the pop that The Rock had when he came out. You think any of those fucking wrestlers in the back today have that pop the way The, way the Rock and Austin had? That's a problem, and we've been saying this for years. And the thing is, too, I got nothing against what Triple H is doing because you can tell he's just having fun instead of thinking of what the storyline is. Basically, he's doing this, what what we've seen with the legendary Godzilla movies. He's just grabbing the toys and putting them together and having fun. And some people hate that with Godzilla. In my opinion, it, that's what Godzilla is all about. You know, even though in the original Godzilla, he was more um, tragic and more um, horror-ish, which I love that version of Godzilla, but people forget about the 60s Godzilla and a little bit of the 90s and millennia, which, which winks to the 60s version that is fun, goofy, but at the same time doesn't take itself too seriously, you know? So, and I love when wrestling doesn't do that, but I know there's a lot of people out here that just is so hardcore to the point that if they see that shit, they don't want to see it. They, they feel like it should be indie shit. And I'm always here like, if we can't have fun with wrestling, then then I guess this is why wrestling is the way it is. Because none of these people, because none of these writers or none of these um people that are in charge of wrestling don't know what to do anymore. Because all of you guys just talk shit of anything that we have right now. Do I blame the wrestling fans? Yes, I do. But I also blame these motherfuckers because they should not fucking listen to you motherfuckers. They should not listen to me. I don't own WWE. They should know what the fuck is going on around here. They should even they should have a fucking wrestling WWE Bible to know what the fuck's going on, and they do, but they don't follow their own fucking rules anyway. So what's the fucking point? WWE ne does need to change. You know what I think? I think we need. I think we need another head. Triple H can say yes, yeah, say yes, yes, yes to this to greenlight certain things, 
but we need a head writer that can literally make shit happen and get good shit. I got nothing against Triple H. Maybe he can write something good. I don't know. But the writing team out there, the head writing team, are just regurgitating shit just because, hey, man, we're just going to get money from the advertisements now. Because WWE has is making so much money to the point that that what the hardcore fans are complaining about, they don't care anymore. We just either we continue to watch or we just leave and watch certain stuff and then leave. I know I have. The stuff that I like from WWE, I will watch. Everything else that I don't like, I will leave. And that's not WWE's fault. If, if there's a wrestler out there that complains that I didn't watch their match, I'm just going to be like, don't blame me. You blame the, the company. I didn't hype the, 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 uh, the match or made, in, or made me care enough for me to fucking care. Still to this day, I am intrigued to watch Hulk Hogan vs. Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 3. Still to this day, I've seen that match. Not when it first came out, obviously, because I wasn't born. But I, I have that match on DVD. And every time I watch it, every time I think about it, I'm just like, that is a WrestleMania match, and that's a WrestleMania moment. Okay? It's the same thing with Shawn Michaels vs. The Undertaker. Oh, my God. Stuff like that, you cannot... You cannot... Put in a machine and regurgitate it and say it's a classic. It has to happen naturally. And this is what is wrong with WWE. They are a machine product that regurgitates old shit like Disney, but they do it worse than Disney. They've been doing this, to be honest, they've been doing this since the PG era. Okay? Ever since the ruthless aggression ended, they've been doing this for a long fucking time. Okay? And some people might have, might have noticed during the Ruthless Aggression era, of course, but wasn't as potent as it is now to the point that you you you, you care about some stories or you care about some wrestlers, but overall, are you going to stay to keep continuing to watch? No. Why would I? I'm not a fucking simp that buys a ticket to WWE every fucking goddamn week just to see what happens. Why? Are you really bored? You can't go outside and put your feet in nature and discover yourself. But no, you want to you want to be distracted by stupid shit like this. How about watch um, Blue Samurai on Netflix? That's pretty good. Kids should not watch it though. It's rated at all, but that's a beautiful animation um, show. You should watch it. It's a good fucking show. Something like that you should watch because it has good characters, good storyline, and there's things that pays homage to Japanese past, like, winks to it, to the point that you'd be like, holy shit. And they touch on subjects, too. See, this is what wrestling used to be. Wrestling used to touch on subjects that they didn't give a fuck about if you got offended about it. They didn't give a fuck. They didn't give a fuck. Even back in the fucking ruthless, ruthless aggression era, they didn't give a fuck. So you can't tell me that, oh, they, oh that changed in the ruthless aggression era. No, they didn't give a fuck around that time either. Once the PG era happened, once they changed to PG-13, that, that's what literally killed everything. I don't care if anyone says that, oh, they're going to go back to TV-14 or all that shit, or they're going to change certain things, man. All the, at the end of the day, they have promoters to make happy. If there's blood, guts, violence, they're not going to, they're not going to get a dime. They're not going to get a dime. Reason... Reason why, if you look back at the old stuff of Ruthless Aggression and Attitude Era, they got promoted by stuff that was more mature. For example, like Gasoline, or Rated R Movie, or, or, or a mature video game. Or a um, or, um, or something that, uh, like an energy drink. That's what they used to do back in the day. Did, did mature products because they were not for kids at all. Kids can watch it, like Looney Tunes, but overall, Looney Tunes is not for kids. Again, you can watch it, but again, it's not for kids. Just like WWE, you can watch it as a kid. I watched it as a kid like crazy, but at the end of the day, we got we to gotta be honest here. Wrestling is really not for kids, guys. You know? Again, you can still watch it, but you got to be the responsible adult to look at a child and be like, you know, this and that, you know? 
don't tell them it's fake. <laughs> you could, you could, you could tell them it's predetermined and shit like that, and have the, and tell them the respect of how these wrestlers put their bodies on the line. You could tell them that because there's all because there's a lot of people out here that don't understand wrestling to the point that they're like everything's fake, everything's fake. And I'm all like, yeah, so is a movie, and you still get engaged with that. See, this is the problem with some people. They want something so real to the point that it hurts somebody, but they want to get entertained by it. But once it happens to them, or they want to scream help and be like, oh, that's fucked up. That's why is this happening to me? You get, it, you get entertained by someone else getting tortured. L let us get entertained by you getting tortured. Oh, it's not fair. Well, it ain't fair for these people, for fucking these people putting their body on the line just for you to be like, yeah. Not to say that's not not to say that doesn't come with the business. Of course it does. The reason we admire these wrestlers is because they do things to the point that you're like, you're gonna kill yourself. You know? And it, it is more dangerous now because you're doing flips and all that stuff, because you didn't see that back then. And that's why sometimes I do miss the old fat fashion wrestling, that slowness sometimes. Not to say they can't be slow, but you know how sometimes you get that slow pace and then eventually it goes fast and fast and all of a sudden they're flipping around and all that doing crazy shit. And then by the end of it, one, two, three, it's over and you'll be like, oh my God, what a ride, you know? It, it, it kind of reminds me, again, going back to the Undertaker vs. Shawn Michaels match, match it kind of reminds me of something like that. Just a roller coaster ride to the point that you're like, this is good. Another good match that's kind of like that from what I can remember was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Undertaker first blood match. Remember that match? Look at the Undertaker DVD and look at that promo. That is the best promo I have ever fucking goddamn seen in a wrestling promotion ever. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Undertaker first blood match. The, 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 the fucking promo of it. At, uh, at, what is it, Undertaker's DVD that came around in 2004 or some shit? 2004 or 5? Watch that shit. Or get it. Because it is worthy to watch that promo. It is so good. You can find it on YouTube, but it, on YouTube, they have stupid crap. It, it doesn't have the same music. It doesn't have the same um editing, the same atmosphere as, as what you watch in the Undertaker DVD. You know? And WWE released that trailer, I think. I mean, the promo. And it's just dog shit. Complete dog shit. And I'm like, oh, God. How could you ruin a beautiful promo? What the fuck's wrong with you? You know, maybe it wasn't WWE. Maybe it was somebody else that did it. But good God, how can you fuck up a promo like that? The promo was already fine the way it was. And then you're gonna just going to take the promo and edit it and put your own music to it when it was already epic and fine on its own? Huh? And that's one of the reasons why I hate modern WWE too, because they do that shit sometimes. Another shit that I hate too, which I can look past, is the promotion stuff. You know, the chips, the 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 the, the, the drinks and all that stuff. That's what really is selling WWE right now. It's not the wrestlers, man. It's not. And that's sad. That's sad because if you if you if you're selling chips and soda. To sell WWE, then guess what? You have no wrestlers. You have no stars. You mean to tell me a bag of Doritos and Mountain Dew is the bigger stars than Roman Reigns and really Ripley? Think about that for a minute. There's a reason why they bring back Brock Lesnar back in The Rock and Cena. So I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, man. It, it, it's just something that we need to think about here. Hey, you could be excited for this match, for, for Roman Reigns versus The Rock. But you guys know how I feel about it. I don't care. I just don't care. I used to care. But WWE sucked it out of me so much to the point that I just don't give a fuck. I just don't care. You mean tell me this match is happening now? Okay, who gives a fuck? Okay. I might watch WrestleMania 40 if it happens, because the reason I say if it happens, because there's other things that are happening on the planet, if you haven't noticed, and you should notice, because it, it involves around everybody that's in this planet, <laughs> seriously, all right, seriously, but I'm not getting too deep into that, you guys should know by this point, I'm dead serious, the news is telling you what the fuck is about to transpire, trans, trans, yeah, transpire,
in America soon. Okay? So, but that's a different story for another day. I just want you guys to think about the stuff that you see in wrestling to the point that, hey, maybe, yes, wrestling's not as good as it, as it used to be. And it's not going to. It's not, guys. That's why I say early before, take the things that you enjoy and leave the bullshit out. And if it's just one little thing or one little skit of something that you saw in WWE and the rest was shit, then that's fine. At least you took one little thing that, that you enjoyed and that could make you happy. You could be like, you know what? Everything went else was shit, but at least this was a highlight to the point that I'm thinking about that I was like, this is the, this put a smile on my face and made me feel like a kid again, a wrestling fan again. You know? And that's what I really cared about, man. That's what I really cared about wrestling, man. You know? Sometimes you get those moments still, but it's not as potent as it should be. I'm not saying those goofy moments. I'm talking about those epic moments that you see in wrestling sometimes when um when like like the whole thing that you see was Zami's Sami Zayn when he was fighting Roman Reigns. That shit was gold in my opinion. That shit was great. You guys had it. That told me right there you guys could do it. But you guys were refusing to do it. And I'm more like I don't get you guys at all. Who does who who does any what what do you have to do to literally have the hypeness back again? Sell your soul? Hey, Sami Zayn, sell your soul to, to the point that, you know, or your spirit to the point that you, we can make you famous. Like, you know, and the crowd will go crazy like The Rock and Cena. Because every time people see Sami Zayn now, people just love, love him. And I love him. I love him more than Kevin Owens. And I don't hate Kevin Owens. That's why I, I brought up the fact that, hey... If there was going to be someone that fought Austin, it should have been um, Sami Zayn, but as a heel. But if you, but you know how Kevin always is, he, that was his thing that he always wanted, even as a kid, in a way, you know. So you could have make it into a handicap match, but not have Austin bump as much as uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And trust me, they would have bumped a lot for Austin. Hell yeah, I know I would. Him just going like this, I would have been like. <laughs> Trust me, I would have sold the fuck out of that shit, man. Hell yeah, why wouldn't you sell? Are you kidding me? Shit. That's the reason why I point out if Undertaker, when Undertaker fought Roman Reigns, I'm just like, I should have fought Undertaker because I would have sold everything and he would have picked me up just fine. <laughs> but moving on. Uh, tell me what you guys think down below. Tell me what you guys think down below. Do you think that, um, do you think I'm, I'm raw on here? Or am I looking at it to the point that hey i can understand what you feel but hey at least we got this and hey if it's a good match then it's a good match and i'm not saying the rock versus Roman Reigns would be a bad match i'm just let me guess what we're gonna get superman punch the rock going like <sighs> turns around and the rock goes like rock bottom one two kick out Roman Reigns comes, spear, uh, the rock kicks out, then all of a sudden people's elbow, and uh, Roman kicks out, then does Superman punch, and one, two, and three, it's over. And the rock is like, they're like, Is this going to be a WrestleMania 29 situation with The Rock and Cena? I think it is, but it could be worse. I know this whole thing with Roman Reigns and Rock has been brewing forever. But it's come to the point that I, I just, like, WWE is making me not care. Make me care. Show me something that I would care about. And look, I know it just started, basically. You know, because people said the same thing with CM Punk and stuff like that. Then that's then the other week he said something. And people were like, oh, okay, and all that shit. And I'm over here like, yeah, I know, but still. Still. And then people bring up with the whole Austin versus Punk shit. Why are you going to... If you're going to have a match like that, you fucking save it. You don't tell people. What the fuck's wrong with you? Just like when The Rock came on Raw and no one didn't know about it, you don't tell people about that shit. The hell's wrong with you? 
That's like saying, oh, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels are going to fight. I'm like, why would you say that? That was the whole story of hyping up to the point that Undertaker or Shawn Michaels will say, hey, um, I want to talk about to the, I want to talk to the person that literally told me um, sometimes it's hell getting to heaven. I remember, I remember when Shawn Michaels said that, and I'm like, yes, we, we're going to get this match, you know, because it was hinted, but we didn't know if we were going to get it, even though we knew we, we were, but the hypeness to that point of Shawn Michaels announcing it was just great. With The Rock right here, he just came, did what he did, not not a very good one, and that was it. And I'm over here like, that's all you got? You're the rock, dude. Even Hollywood rock is looking at you like, damn, dude. Buff Hollywood rock sucks. For real. He does. Buff Hollywood, Buff Hollywood the rock, he sucks, man. He sucks. He sucks. I've been feeling this way for quite a while. I didn't felt this way when he came back to fight Cena. But over the years when he did keep coming back, I was just like, I'm sick of, I'm sick of seeing him, especially when you see him in movies. It's come to the point that you're like, I don't want to see this motherfucker on my screen anymore. I want to see Cena on my screen. <laughs> so what's going to happen at Mania? If I feel this way, I'm sure other people feel this way too. Will they boo the rock and cheer for Roman? Maybe, maybe. Look, look, is that too far fetched? Of course, of course it is. You know, and the thing is, right after Roman Reigns to take the throne of WWE, who's going to take it right after it? I don't see anyone else. Yeah, there might be other people that might be on the throne and out of the throne, but there's always going to be that one person that's always on that throne. At one point, it was always John Cena. He bounced back with either Randy Orton or Batista, but it was always Cena. Sometimes, you know. Sometimes I want to be Taker or Edge, but it would always be Cena, you know? It's the same thing back then. Sometimes I want to be Undertaker, Kurt Angle, or The Rock, but it's always going to be so called Steve Austin, you know? So it's something to think about. And it's something that a lot of people don't really want to think about for after Roman Reigns is gone. And that is something that people have pointed out when Roman Reigns first came to WWE. To the point that he was going to be a replacement to John Cena. And it's like, okay, so what's the... So, after John Cena, wh wh what's next? You keep diminishing, diminishing these, these superstars to the point that there is not going to be another John Cena. There ain't going to be another Rock or Austin or all that shit or another Undertaker. Because this company refuses that and decides to be bigger than the superstars. I'm sorry, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. You are a company that are supposed to make these stores bigger and larger than life. And people look at your company and saying that, yo, they got big in that place. Instead of being like, oh, cool. Um, WWE made you big. You see? You see how the reverse is? Remember back then when wrestlers used to make WWE famous? Now it's just WWE trying to make, trying to make wrestlers famous. And the key word here is try. Try. And they're failing, man. They're failing. I know some people out there are going to be like, well, eventually come back and shit like that. And I'm going to be like shaking my head. Like, if you're still hoping with this whole Vince shit, I'm just like, he got allegations up the ass, motherfucker. If you're voting for a fucking pedo piece of shit, not pedo, but a molester piece of shit then something's seriously wrong with you. Something's seriously wrong with you. That is some type of sickness to the point that you you will literally see your own sister and mama get fucking raped by this man. And you will be like, are you still going to run WWE and make good storylines? That's, that's fucking like, these, these are the type of people, these are the type some wrestling fans, I'm going to put quotations on that because they're not wrestling fans. They're fucking psychopaths. They're fucking psychopaths that make us, true wrestling fans, look fucking bad and crazy. And some wrestlers out here do know that. They do know that. They've seen some crazy wrestling fans like that. But they also have met respected wrestling fans that understood the business and have such a respect for the art. Oh, God. To the point that they want to learn so much. And I don't blame them. I don't. I don't blame them at all. I was like that when I was a little kid. Like, because this shit is fun. It's fun. 
But WWE doesn't want to make it fun. They want to make it a fucking chore. Like school. What the hell's on with y'all? No one doesn't want to be reminded of school. Just saying. No one doesn't want to be reminded of dumb bullshit. You know? And that's why there's a lot of people out here saying that Triple H sucks being in charge. And while I disagree, in a way, yes. But at the same time, I cannot disagree with the people that say that he does. Look at the shit that we're getting. Vin is not there anymore. <laughs> and the guy that owns WWE now, what, Nick Khan? Not Nick Khan. Is it Nick Khan? No, no, it's not Nick Khan. Sorry, I'm thinking about some somebody else. I could be right about that, but again, I'm, I'm not thinking of the people that are in charge of WWE right now. But the UFC people, they, they should do this way better. This was supposed to be way better. But hey, this is UFC. The, these are the type of people that cannot make storylines <laughs> with UFC. They'll promote the wrestlers, promote their weight, promote all of this shit, like boxing, and then have them talk some shit and then promote it for the pay-per-view that is like five or six months later. That's why I can never get into boxing or wrestling. I mean, or, or UFC, because I just don't care about that shit. Where's the story? Where's me or oh, I'm going to rip your head off because you did this and that to me? Or you took my title or some shit like that. Or you kissed my girl or some shit like that. Or you tried to kill me and run me over and shit like that. Come on, where's the story? Where's the story? Where's the drama? Where's the action? You know? And and I get it. There's some stuff that I see in UFC that are really good. When, when they start fighting. But that's the only thing you care about. When they start fighting. It's the same thing in WWE nowadays. You don't, like, the storylines are like, eh. All you, have, all you have to hope for is good wrestling. And not to say we don't get that, but there's supposed to be a story behind it to make it more memorable, more awesome, more engaging to the point that it becomes memorable over the years in WWE forever. Just like Austin versus Bret Hart. That scene when Austin is bleeding, he won't tap out. That's a story right there. Come on. What the fuck? Even when wrestlers, when they were young and they saw that, they were like, that is a badass motherfucker. But yet they won't do that with Roman Reigns. If Roman Reigns and The Rock did something like that, I guarantee you they won't let that shit happen. Oh no, we can't have that. We can't have blood. Even when they had blood in the Ruthless Aggression era, they covered it with black and white. I hated it, but it was necessary. The less they, you know, I'd rather have that than not have it at all. Because it took, because it took away of the story. It took away of, of how much these characters hated each other. You know, but apparently we can't get that anymore, man. With wrestling, but we can get that with other products, like anime, um, live action stuff. You know, little even even little kid stories would get that shit. We might not have it might be not be violent violent, but it's fantasy violent to the point you'd be like, oh god, that's actually pretty rough for a kid to watch, but they can understand it because it's fantasy. It's not it's not GTA <laughs> or it's not like fucking oh, I don't know, like flow over the cuckoo's nest or some shit. <laughs> you know? Or, or Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Good God. <laughs> So it, that's the stuff that I'm talking about. Like, we need good stuff from WWE to the point that we need some people like my mom to fucking get engaged to it. Look at the stuff that you see with the MCU. I've mentioned this before, too, because WWE can, can take advantage of the superhero stuff. And they never did. They never did. And now it's to the point that a lot of people don't care about the superhero stuff. I do. But now we're going back to the point to Hollywood that we're getting other products and original stuff, which is fine. I'm always up for that. We always going to get superhero movies and all that. We had that back in the day, so that's not going to go anywhere, you know. But now to the point we're getting more variety in Hollywood. So hopefully WWE sees that and they'll be like, you know what? If Hollywood is changing to the point that they're doing variety, we should too. But I'm not holding my breath. But it is true, though. Sometimes when the audience change... WWE needs to change. And apparently the audience have, has changed to the point that we're not being hurt anymore. It's just casual fucking goddamn people. 
or people that want to be wrestling fans to the point that they don't know all the classic stuff. These are the wrestling fans that will not watch Iron Claw. They won't care about the history of of the brothers. They just be like, "What is this shit?" Th- these are the type of people that won't watch the movie Man on the Moon and and get the feel of how Andy Kaufman was, or even research about Andy Kaufman. I, mean, I was so happy and stoked that he went to the Hall of Fame, as he should. He should have went to the Hall of Fame a long time ago, back when they started doing the fucking Hall of Fame. They should have done that at WrestleMania 21, to be quite honest with you, which would have made more sense to do it. But they didn't do it. But hey, you know, better late than ever. Glad to, glad to see Andy Kaufman in the Hall of Fame. He does deserve it. He does. If you've done your history with Andy Kaufman and the whole stuff of wrestling, because he was literally the first celebrity in a way to be part of wrestling. And then after that, there was celebrities that were coming to wrestling. Without, with, <laughs> believe it or not, without Andy Kaufman, Logan Paul won't be in wrestling. <laughs> you know, you could be you could be angry at him at that, but at the same time, you could be happy about it because there's certain people that went to wrestling to, to fight. You know, so, um, so that's really it. Um, like for example, like Andre Rousey. You know, that's another good example. But um, I'll see you guys later. Seriously. But Ronda Rousey was a UFC fighter and all that MMA and all that, all that shit. So it's a different story. But still, um, she was still famous, basically. You know, celebrity point-wise. So anyways, that's it. Um, tell me what you guys think down below of how I, you know, my opinions and thoughts of, the, of this whole WWE stuff. Um, I'll hopefully, well, I can't hold my breath with them. But hopefully, maybe someone in WWE will see this video and be like, mm, well, we'll get, get some pointers. They don't have to listen to me 100%. Remember, you, I just don't want you guys to look at the numbers and be like, well, the chart says, please don't do that. Don't. Because at that point, you lost me as a wrestling fan. You lost me as a consumer. And you lost me to the point that I'm just going to make my own shit, not wrestling-wise, but other shit that I will enjoy and other people might enjoy. I just want, I just want wrestling to just be fun again, and it has some of those moments, but it's not as fun as it used to be. And I'm not saying it should it should not be. I'm not saying with the whole bikini stuff and the whole other stuff. There's so many more things with wrestling just about women's in bikinis and saying cross words and throwing an old lady into a fucking table on the fucking stage of gall. <laughs> okay. There's more than wrestling to that, but you can have those moments in wrestling to have like a shock value. You guys used to do shock values before and it worked for you to your advantage, you know, and I'm not saying to do a shock value, something that you say in family guy, no, you actually made it work for the wrestler that you were actually doing it with. Like, uh, for example, the Dudley brothers, they did crazy shit. And it made sense that they were doing it. Another one, Randy Orton. You know? How many times you watch wrestling and then Randy Orton comes out of nowhere, oh, okay, and you're like, that stupid motherfucker, ah! You know, when you were younger, when Randy Orton was a heel? Nowadays, you see you, are like, yeah! Okay, no! <laughs> you know? So, it's just, man. It's just the good times, man. The good times, man. And then when a wrestler makes you feel like you hate them and stuff like that, that's how you know it's good storytelling good good hypeness and you'll be like oh i like that i like that you made me hate you man uh you, you're doing a good job good job keep doing what you're doing you know i love when wrestlers can make you still feel that way and you'll be like you know what keep doing what you're doing you know what you're doing you're going to have a long time um career in this business because that is pretty dope you know so you can always see you can always see that in the in the cracks and the noogies nu- of what's happening in wrestling but it's not enough as it is for people to be engaged and come back every time, especially hardcore fans. Hardcore fans will come back as of right now, as of 2024. Hardcore fans are just going to come back because just to see what's up and just to heal the commotion that what's happening. Other than that, we're just living our lives, watching probably old shit, old products of wrestling, and again, doing other shit that we like. 
you know, there's other shit that we enjoy besides wrestling, you know, so, and, and some people, even in WWE and outside of WWE, think that, hey, if we don't get out of this bubble, we become crazy, we need to be always in this wrestling bubble all the time, I remember when I got out of that bubble, I saw a lot of things in different perspectives of wrestling, and I was just like, wow, WWE really kept me inside this bubble of wrestling, and then when I finally popped it, I saw so many things that were fucked up and corrupt that no one doesn't want to talk about because they think you're conspiracy and all that shit. And I'm over here like, guys, it's literally there for a reason. All you have to do is more research about it. That's really it. That's really it. Like, I encourage you to find this shit if you want to prove me wrong. You know, it's like that type of shit. You know? And you can't stop digging just because, well, I found this. No, you have to keep digging and digging and digging until you literally find the fucking code and all the bullshit. Okay? Seriously. But I'll see you guys. Be safe. And tell me what you guys think about this video and the whole thing with Roman Reigns vs. The Rock. Again, if you're looking forward to it, more power to you. I'm just going to skip this. <laughs> I am. I'm just going to skip this match. Um, obviously, it's going to be a night two at Mania. Of course, it's going to be at WrestleMania, duh. Um, I will be surprised if it is night one, or I even be surprised if it's in the Elimination Chamber. Either way, that's fine. I don't care if it's a Mania, Elimination Chamber, or anywhere else, Royal Rumble or some shit. I don't give a fuck. All I know is, is that I'm just not going to watch it. So, see ya.